It's really dark out here. Hey guys and gals, it's another video from the wet coast. Well, actually this is gonna be two videos. I'm gonna show you how to wire auxiliary lights onto any 12 volt vehicle. Part one, I'm gonna be making the mounts for those lights. And if you're interested in the actual wiring of that, you're gonna to have to look at part two, where I'll show you how to hook up a switch and a relay, figure out current, draw on the lights. And I'll show you why I need to do this. This is my compact tractor. It's got a front, front end loader on it. It's got a backhoe and it has headlights and they work great. But as you know, when the bucket is up, it is obscuring the headlights themselves. So at nighttime, I don't want to be riding around with the bucket held up too high so I can see because that sets up a, an imbalance if I've got a load in the bucket and it could tip the tractor over, which is protected by this. This is the rollover protection system or ROPS or R-O-P-S. Say that 10 times fast. So I figure what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook into the electrical system of the tractor and I'm going to mount a switch maybe somewhere on the console here or somewhere on the fender here. I do have a 12 volt auxiliary plug over there somewhere. I'm going to tap into that and I'm going to put a light switch and up on top of the rollover protection system, I am going to put two LED floodlights pointing forward and two LED floodlights pointing backwards. So I can have light if I'm using the backhoe or a have light if I'm using the front end loader. Now the thing with a rollover protection system is you don't want to be drilling into it. In fact, it specifically says that in the manual. Might even say it somewhere here. No, that's fuel. Um, it says don't weld or don't drill holes into it because that's going to affect the integrity of the rollover protection system and could end up in a crushing death, which would be a real bummer for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fabricate a bracket that will clamp onto the rollover bar at the top there and allow me to mount two LED lights forward and back. So the rollover bar is a two inch by uh, three inch rectangular tube. And because I don't want to drill in it, what I want to do is make some type of clamp that's going to have a hinge. So it'll be hinged on the back here. I'll be able to open it up, close it, wrap it around here and then bolt it on the other side and then I'll just weld some tabs off the top of it so two of the lights will point forward two of the lights will point backwards and that should work now I need to figure out how I'm gonna make that so what I'm thinking is I have four pieces of angle iron one foot long and there'll be a hinge at the back here and then these top pieces will be joined by just some tabs holding it and that's going to make a rectangular shape that will just clamp onto the tube and then I can weld tabs on the top corners and I can hang a light off of each corner. I'll weld a couple of little tabs here or angle iron maybe, something like that. And there'll be a bolt that is going to be threaded through the top one. If I can write this down. And the top one will kind of have another tab like that. And the bolt's going to go down through the holes and I can tighten it and it'll clamp this whole thing together with the hinge. Have enough space in here where I can put some padding, maybe like shelf liner material or some type of rubber sheet, because what that's going to do is both protect the roll bar from abrasion. This is just going to be scrap angle iron that I'm using. And it should absorb a little bit of vibration when the tractor motor is running, because that's going to be amplified on that length of roll bar. So with the lights up here on the end of that long pole, they're gonna bounce all over the place. So a little bit of rubber padding or something in here, I think that'll work well. And it'll allow me to tighten it down really good. 
and it shouldn't slide left or right on the bar because there isn't any pinning or anything I'm gonna do to hold that in place. It's all just gonna be friction. I think that's gonna work. Time to get building. So now that I've shown you what the clamp is gonna look like for mounting the work lights on the tractor, I went ahead and I took a piece of scrap wood from a pallet and I turned it into a two by three section of one foot long rectangular wood that I'm gonna use as a template to make the clamp with. So what I'm gonna do is cut a piece of angle iron, one foot long for each corner, and then bridge it or weld it or whatever, and then put tabs on it. And that should get me what I need for mounting the work lights on the roll bar. I'll show you the materials I'm gonna use for this because I'm just gonna recycle some stuff. This is some angle iron. Uh, it's an old bed frame. There's two of these. It, you put a mattress on it, you can roll the mattress around. I'm just gonna cut those into the appropriate lengths. And that way I'm just recycling something I have instead of going out and buying new materials. And for the hinge, I am literally using a beat up old door hinge. It's gonna work just fine. So the clamp will open up. This will be welded along the back. I just have to cut it to length. I will give it a bit of a cleanup on the grinder. That'll look fine when I'm done. Now I've got the four lengths of angle iron cut. I'm gonna just place it on my little block there and weld the hinge on. All right, so I've got the hinge all cleaned up and I've got the spots that I'm gonna weld onto the actual angle bracket. And I'm just gonna cut some one inch pieces of this, which will eventually be welded on the ends here. And that's how I'm gonna mount the lights themselves. I'll show you what the light, lights look like in a few minutes, but right now I'm just going to cut some angle, some tabs, and I only need four of those. I'm going to make them one inch on a side. I've got lots of angle left over, so I'm going to do that right now. spacers just so that the, these are held at the right distance So I made these four little sections of flat bar. I'm going to weld them between the pieces of angle iron. It's going to give me the width that I need for the front end of the clamp. And then it's almost done. Just have to weld the tabs on, drill some holes, and figure out a clamping system. I've got an idea for that using some threaded rod. I've clamped up the angle iron and the little joining pieces and it's time to make sparks.
Sometimes the hardest part about making something is figuring out how to hold it all together with just two hands before you can do the welding. Okay, that's not too bad. Now on the tractor, the roll bar is actually canted like this. So what I'm gonna do is weld the light tabs on kind of like that. And then there'll be another one maybe in the middle here just to give myself some room. I'll show you what the lights themselves look like. These are the LED spotlights that I'm gonna use on the tractor. I'm gonna have four of them. Two will be pointed forward, two will be pointed backwards. They draw about one amp of power each, which is not too bad. I'll show you how to measure that a little bit later. I'll also put a link to these in the description. They're pretty handy, they're pretty cheap. You can buy them in singles or boxes of four or boxes of eight. Obviously, the more you buy, the cheaper they are. And it has this little sliding mount that will go like that and it allows the light to tilt up and down and you can just tighten it down. So this is the mount for the light. I'm gonna drill the holes in the tabs there. And then the mount will kind of go on something like that. And the light will sit here. You get the general idea how it's gonna work. Time to start drilling holes. So to clamp this side, I'm going to cut two more pieces of angle and I'm going to weld one on the bottom, one on the top, weld a nut to the bottom of the underside and then I can just run a, a bolt through it and that will hold it on real tight. It's already got a hole in it. All right, so I've got the two tabs ground and shaped. One of them already had a hole in almost the perfect spot, so I'm just gonna run with that. Uh, that's from the original bed frame where the leg mounted to it. And the other one I've just kind of rounded. Uh, I'll drill, match these up and drill a hole and then weld them onto the actual uh, bracket itself. Um, that was a great time for a PSA, the grinder. A lot of times you're gonna see me one-handing it, which is really not a good idea. And I'm usually doing it at a weird angle Huh, angle grinder. Um, I make myself laugh. Um, and that's just for the camera because if I was to hold it two-handed and get my body into it, uh, a lot of times you guys wouldn't even see what I'm doing. So fortunately, I have the strength where I can control the grinder quite reasonably one-handed and I'm not grinding too aggressively. But really, I should be using both hands and I should have the workpiece in the vise uh, a lot more secure and at and not at weird cocked angles. Uh, that, like I said, is just for the camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. So just keep that in mind when you're grinding something. Stable footing, nothing underfoot. Use both hands, keep control of the, the machine you're using and it won't get away from you. And I realized this, this is a no-no. I didn't realize this hoodie still had the drawstrings on. That's a bad jam. Um, if I was using my drill, there's a chance that this string could get wrapped up in the bit and pull me right into the machine. It's a little bitty drill press. It's not gonna do any damage. I can I can turn off the switch and I'll be okay. But uh, don't wear loose clothing like this when you're working with machinery. Anyways, back to the build.
So I'm using these welding clamps to get a 45 degree angle. I know that I need a 45 degree angle because I used my digital protractor to find the angle on the rollover protection bar on the tractor. And I know it's about 45 degrees. Using these welding magnets, I can get pretty close to 45 degrees with that. And then I can just eyeball along the length when I'm gonna weld the tabs on and that's gonna get me close enough to level that it won't matter. And there it is. I'm just gonna put a bolt through there for now. Bolt in a nut, pull it together. Opens up nicely. It's gonna sit on the tractor, sort of at an angle like that. So you can see I've got two sections on the left for the front and rear lights and another section on the right for the front and rear lights. So I'm gonna have two lights here facing this way. It will be facing towards the rear of the tractor. Two lights facing forwards, which will be the front of the tractor. So a total of four lights, two front, two back. The next thing I'll do is paint this thing. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. I'm just gonna put some black rust paint on here, let it dry, and then it'll be ready for the next phase of the auxiliary lights. It's turned out pretty good. So I will continue in part two of this video where I'm hooking up the relays and attaching the lights. This thing will be painted, as I said. And then I should actually have some working lights that I can use when it gets dark outside. If you're enjoying this video, why not hit the like button? And if you enjoy my channel, why not subscribe? I've got a lot of fun stuff planned. Regardless, I'll see you in the next video. I'll put a link in the description to this one once I've got it up and running. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.